Listen to me. May these people standing not be in vain. That long stand they stood to illustrate the point. May you understand. Amen. You think Jesus left heaven and came to save cash? No, he didn't. And I've told you the number one way not to do God's will is pursue money. How did all this start? Of course, it's for major individuals here. There are people that heard us preach these things, left here and went and did juju to have money. So if you think when I'm preaching that I'm preaching to people that don't exist, you are highly, sorely mistaken. That was not a figurative expression. That was a real story. The people that have sat under me, heard me preach. I don't even preach. I'm calm these days. I'm calm. They've heard me preach violently against the love of money. Then you hear someone say that I'm on my way to a to, 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 to a native doctor. Because when you hear the message, you reject it. You hear the message, you reject it. And go like, no, that, or that can't happen to me. Or, or, or well, I don't, I don't agree with you, pastor. I, 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 I think Jesus wants us to have money. That's why I said, first and foremost, stop reading all those books. Go and get rid of them. They even have them. And don't be spreading error. Now, I'm going to give a time for asking questions so you can ask. But if you don't ask and you continue in your practices, one day, on the day of judgment, you will be condemned. Why do you think the Pharisees couldn't follow Jesus? They scoffed. And if you don't know that the Pharisees were the most, in quote, righteous of their time, then you don't know much. They paid tight from seeds that God did not factor in when he, said, he, when he asked for tight. Tight. That Matthew 23 tells you. They give seed of, they gave tight of everything, but they did not know mercy. They did not know justice. They did not know faithfulness. They use externalities. In this nation and around the world have been practices that are exactly like the scribes and Pharisees. I don't believe in having experience when someone else has experienced it and told us the story. I don't. Why would I want to experience painful things? When it happened to her, it should, it should happen to me too. What does that even mean? Let's use you as the example. Why must I suffer? I must have scars too. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. This is the day of God's favor, His grace. This is a day you get to know God. Stop mixing him with your idols. God doesn't like idols. What's the kingdom of God? Someone is asking. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It is the domain where the king is God. Kingdom, king's domain, king's doom. The territory over which the king reigns. Now, wherever he reigns, including your personal life, I don't mean reign in words. He reigns. When he gives commands, they are obeyed. That's the kingdom. But in the specific sense in which Jesus used to say it, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You need to be born again so you can see the kingdom. He was talking about when the Lord Jesus will rule on earth. Specifically, that is the kingdom of God. All your other interpretation, that's your interpretation. You have refused to study. So you call, you, Matthew, uh, unfortunately, would say the kingdom of heaven. But he was clear that this kingdom is coming. You call it the Lord's prayer. Very clear language. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. How? On earth as it is in heaven. Well, how could it be clearer? The kingdom is to come. So if it is heaven in the sky, how, how is it going to come? And I've told you, God will terraform. God is going to translate earth into the heavenly replica. 
as was the original intention when Adam and Eve were set to constitute and replenish the earth. He started by planting a garden. That was a microcosm, a small version of what was to be all over the earth. That was what he was happening. That's the kingdom. Then the enemy came and stole it from them, deceived them, and they handed it over to him. Why? Because to whomsoever you yield yourself as a servant to obey, his servant you are. So as they obeyed the serpent, they became slaves to sin. The serpent. That's how Satan came into power. Then the Lord Jesus was sent, promised immediately in that same Genesis, that the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent, and his seed will be at war with the seed of the serpent. That's Genesis 3.15. Are you seeing? This was the battle. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. He's talking to the serpent here. This is that serpent. Do you remember how I started? How we prayed at the beginning? War. People, this is the war we were praying about. Enmity. There's a battle. It will never stop. It will end with the head of the serpent being crushed. But remember, the serpent is not just the serpent and his head. He has seed. Say brood of snakes. Say children of snakes. Who did John say that to? You brood of vipers. The children of the snake are not necessarily people that don't go to church. Are you hearing me? Nah. The greatest enemies of the will of God throughout the ages has been a false religion. When you believe in a theory that says all people that call on the name of Jesus in any way that say Jesus are one in Christ. That means you think the Pharisees and scribes did not call on God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? He said he will bruise his heel. The true body of Christ will be attacked by a substitute. The children or the seed of the serpent the seed of the serpent are the children. They are the children of the woman. Which woman? Not Eve. Matthew 13 explains it. That the seed that was planted by the sower, who is the son of man, are the children of the kingdom. And that the seed that was planted by the enemy when men slept. Have you read this before? That it was the children of the evil one. He's clear. He tells you they are seed. Human beings are seed. What should you know? Everyone hearing me. Why should you not just be a civilian? Because civilians can't fight. And the great end time battle is coming. The kingdom is coming. When you're born again, you're meant to see the kingdom. When you see the kingdom coming, advancing, you must know that the kingdom advances. Acts chapter 14. It's through great tribulation that you enter it. That's the kingdom of God, suffering violence. The kingdom of God suffers violence. Violence will be encountered. You're not going to stroll into the kingdom. Give me Acts of the Apostles. Through much tribulation, 
Read the second part. We must endure many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Question, if you had entered it, which one is this hardship to enter? Excuse me, look at me, all of you that you've been told. You were told, once you gave your life to Christ, you entered, you're now part of the kingdom of God. Raise your hands. That you knew. Now you're going to start telling lies. Because, uh, bring, give me a microphone, let me deal with everybody. You tell me what they told you. Oh yeah, one microphone's on my right and left. Come and take. When you got born again, what happened to you? Pass it randomly. You can do them to just give any soul. Why are you moving everywhere and looking at people's faces? Give it to anybody on your left and right. Hold you on that side. Don't raise your hand now. It's too late. I'm looking for sacrificial lambs. Give, give her. Give. Who is there next to? Don't pick on the girls. Though. Yes. Hey, hey, tell me about the kingdom of God. When you got born again, what did this happen to you? You are not a child of God. Speak. Okay, I was told I'm now a child of God. You're a child of God. I'm, you're, what's your relationship with the kingdom of God? You've never heard this phrase before, kingdom of God. You don't even know what this is. Kingdom of heaven, God. When you die, you go to it. Pass the mic to the person on your right. I can't see your face, but it's okay. I don't mind. Ah, that one looks like she came to deal. Pass it to the person on your own right. Does she look like someone that came yesterday? I had go ahead. Kingdom of God. So when we got born again, we were told that we are now welcome into God's fold, that we are now the sons and daughters of God, that Satan will have no power over us anymore. Thank you for the nice expression. I'm talking about kingdom of heaven. Yes, we were told that we are partakers of the kingdom of heaven. Partakers. Yes, sir. Thank you. Were you told that you enter the kingdom of heaven through hardship? No. Give we that were brother not meant to you. suffer. You, you know, go suffer, Lala. Pass it to you, brother. <laughs> Give him. Yes, yes, this side. Uh -huh. Yes, sister. Give it to the one next to you. Is it because you're wearing a uniform? <laughs> Tell us about your relationship with the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And the people that had teachings on the kingdom of heaven, you're the ones that should have raised your hand. I mean, before now, you should have raised your hand and saved our brethren that they even know what key, key with it. They don't even know. Uh -huh. Sister. Okay. Um, when I, when I gave my life to Christ, I got the explanation that instead of, you know, they recite the phrase that we give our life to Christ. So they explained to me that we are actually receiving Christ, the life of Christ. Beautiful. This kingdom of God. I, like what she said, we are partakers of, of the, the kingdom, kingdom and then working out our salvation. With uh, this is a good church you went to. I want to be a member. <laughs> Walking out your salvation. That sounds good. That sounds good. Collect the mind. Pass it to Akeba. Pass it. Give me the first mail that is next to you. Give me the first mail. Give me the first mail that is next to you. When I gave my life to Christ, I... I didn't understand. My perception of the kingdom of God was that I was born into the kingdom, that I was, in a way I thought, my understanding was that the kingdom of God was here and also in heaven, so I was just born into the kingdom. I was now part of the, the kingdom. kingdom. Okay. Now, who are those that were taught on the kingdom? Some teaching. You, you taught something. Yes, look at him. Look, raise your hand properly so they can see you. What were you taught about the kingdom? Then you give. Go on. Okay. Um, the teachings on the kingdom was that once you are born again, you are granted access into the kingdom as a heir to the throne or to God. An heir to the throne. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were the head. I was really worried. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. Yes. 
Put it to your mouth. Put it to your mouth. We were told that um, we have to pray to connect. You drew something on the board telling us that that is our spirit mind. So we've been carrying along debt, cars, masturbation, everything. So you don't just get clean at once. So Where do you learn this? Sir? Jesus Disciples Fellowship. Okay. So you pray. We tell you you pray, then you come for gospel all the time. Okay. You know the thing about Jesus. Who knows Jesus Disciples Fellowship? Quite a number. How many of you attended? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Remind me to make a comment about them. Or maybe to ask you questions about them. Yes. All right. Um, I wasn't really introduced to um, like giving your life to Christ thing. Basically, was I asked bapt- about the kingdom. Yes. I just want to know what so you like, thought about. So, like, when you are baptized into the church, there are teachings they give us, like word of wisdom, basic things you can do. And what I was taught about the kingdom was basically that we we'll have to live with our own families. Like, they do things about genealogy. Basically, if your parents, you know, in Corinthians, about we die every day, as Paul said, he died every day. So they use that to teach us that you die by baptizing for your parents. So like they have a family tree, basically. So Excuse giving me. you the hope that... Uh, who, who be this? Latter day saints. Like that in the kingdom of the God, ad, that's how you... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the Mormons. The Mormons. That's the Mormons. Which are not exactly... Uh, the church, uh, they kind of, uh, hmm. <laughs> yes, tell me about uh, Jesus' disciples. What do you think about, where's the other mic? Go this way. Where's the hand I saw it later, the, uh, Jesus' disciples? The fair guy there. Okay, oh. Um. My experience in Jesus' disciples. No, the one-minute version. Not your experience. That's too okay, fat and like, big. It's like in school. Yeah, they, they educate. They, yeah, they good. Educate but what do you school. think about them as of now? Bots are good. I have a, a bot. Um, I know you're still, you're still a visitor. You just visit us well. It's like, um, they are named Jesus' disciples fellowship. But they later change, like, as you are going... Then they now call themselves Kingdom Kingdom Ministry. So there they will expose you to things of the kingdom, the suffering, how you go to farm, to walk, to keep the flesh, and many things like that. Only farm breaking rock, Uncle. Uh, the rock has finished. Pass through that one, but you, that you, you, re- you refuse to go to Abia State. <laughs> okay. All right, what I know about them. When you start that um, first man, new man class, after some time, you have to go to swab up. That's where you'll suffer a lot. Like if you are, if you, are you will be divided into groups. If your group is to break rocks or to go down the valley and bring out gravels, no matter how you suffer, they will tell you that that's the, 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 the situation of your spirit man. So as you're breaking the rock, you are... You are coming out, your spirit man is coming out of your flesh because your spirit, you must suffer the flesh to be sure that your spirit man is delivered. So like when we went to the farm once, they gave me rough machete. So when I carried this machete to cut the, the cassava, I was like, how come every other person's zone is sharp and mine is too blunt? They told me my, my spirit man is blunt and that's why I have to... And, um, Another thing is, another thing is, they don't allow you to read, like Pastor tells us to read some spiritual books that can help us there. 
You don't read any book from anybody. They're only telling you that they are the kingdom men. No other person will get into the kingdom of God except them. Then no other person is condemned. I believe that's the point my brother left and said, my lecturer in school is a real born again. So won't he go to heaven? How about the people in the village? Won't they go? So we stopped at a point. All right. Well, let me say this one because of time. If you are part of that group, I would suggest you leave immediately. I know Nigerians use the word cult to refer to violent boys, but that's not what the word cult means in English so much. Rather, it means it's more of like people who follow a leader. If you're following Jesus, that's not exactly a cult, but you can claim to follow Jesus, but you're a cult. So if you're part of that or you've been part of that and you're hearing this, and it's not a joke, how do you know they are exceedingly dangerous? While they teach some things that are true, anybody holding the Bible will say something that is true. That last point she made, even if that's the only reason, that's enough. I've told you any group on earth that says they are the only way to heaven, to Jesus, is false. You cannot be. How can you be the only way? That is, if someone is not part of your group, it's useless. You're not going anywhere. It doesn't matter how sincere or devoted you are. So every other part of the body of Christ in existence now are wasting their time. So when this uh, brother years ago joined them, didn't know about all this. And then he asked them, so when I tell him to ask, so when, when, when did they start? They say around 2001. Say, so what about everybody before that? What about all the people? I, I, I ask them, where are you people? They say, oh, they are in Nigeria. They are in one European country or two at the time. They are in uh, uh, some countries, one or two, Ghana and so. A few places. So, so the question is, so what about people everywhere else? Nobody is saved. The answer is yes, unfortunately. Only those who join them, who are part of them, their group, are saved. That is the best definition of a cult. It is so crazy, I couldn't believe it. Anyone that believes that the group you are in is the only way to know Jesus. Listen, you've just heard me speak against false teaching. There's something like false teaching. A sincere child of God can, is partly sincere or a sincere but mistaken child of God can say error. You can say that the clothes he was wearing was blue when it was purple. You can make a mistake or you can argue out of pride. And you're still a child of God. But when you tell people that if you're wearing purple, that you are not a human being, that you're a robot, you say you've left, you're now the play is too serious. It's not even play again. I'm not going to the details of trying to make your flesh suffer so that you can be righteous in God. So all of that is just error. The one reason, don't forget this one, when you come across a Jesus disciple person, just ask them, do you people believe that if someone does not join your group, he's not born again? As he says, yes. Just tell him, listen to me. Now, you see, you have made the group Jesus. So Jesus is not the door. Jesus' disciples are the door. Do you understand? Now, that is anti-Christ. That substitute Christ. It's not a small error. It's a mega error. I mean, all the things I've said that point out some errors going on in the body of Christ that are going on in different groups. Never will you hear me tell you that people cannot stay in those different denominations and be saved. You never hear me say it. But when someone has taken a group and made it Jesus, that's a pure idol. That is wicked deception. That's the kind of deception that is demonic. 
It's not, it's not an it's not that oh the leader of our group is greedy. He's using us to get a uh, stone to sell. No, 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 not only that. He's using us for free labor. No, no. You have come into demonic deception. Because it's impossible for the Holy Ghost to have revealed to anybody that it is only through joining their group that you can be a child of God. It's not possible. And they've transcended the Bible. The apostolic age is past. They are in a foot level now. We are still in the third. We are still coming. Yeah, and they've gone beyond. They are in another age. So they are they are teachings. Do you know there are teachings are higher than the Bible? That they can judge Peter, James, and John and say, no, that was their level. They didn't know. Do you know that? So the Bible is not their standard for life. Yes. They teach this as you keep rising. They let you into more light. That is not a church. You don't say, oh, this church. Well, let's not condemn. You don't, that's a cult. If you are greater than the scripture, that means you understand the moment someone is above scripture, it means you can't use the scripture to disagree with them because they are greater than it. They've had a revelation greater than the scripture. So they are out of your league. So you know anyone with Jesus' disciples, you better tell them in this plain language. You better run. Ask them first, do you believe in the Bible? Then ask them, do the people you believe in believe that the Bible should instruct them and they must ask it through. Any group on earth that says it is only through us you can come to God is anti-Christ. That is a substitute. The word anti there does not mean, you mean, you think it means opposite. It doesn't mean opposite. It means another Christ. They've created another Christ. They are Jesus' discipleship group. Otherwise not the kingdom what? Kingdom men. Kingdom brothers. The kingdom program. That's the kingdom of darkness. That's not the kingdom of light. It's a very serious thing. It's one of the most dangerous. Why that brother that first told us about it. There's a, an older brother. Sam Wilson was part of them long before he came here. Why uh, another brother of ours who met them in Lagos about four or five years ago, was so excited at first, was because they sounded, when we say, oh, this, that, that, the kingdom, they say, oh, they said the same things. I'm older, I don't get excited by anything. I say, it's okay, just keep watching, learn. And then as time went on, till he realized that he was one, one of the few only in the world that will go to heaven. You know, by the time he thought about, compared to the rest of this church, how him is not even really worthy. You know, he now thought, ah, so as he, I've come, I've taken pastor, everybody, oh, uh, wow, oh, oh, poor pastor, hey, yeah, even he joined. So by the time he realized that he has overtaken, <laughs> he checked himself and concluded, no, I think I am wrong. You know, I told him, no, run. So they pray, they study, they speak calmly. There are other groups like that. In China, in South Korea, there's a Jesus, but she's a female in South Korea. Eastern Lightning, they have another name. If you see some of these, if you hear how they sound. So someone say, ah, look at this. No, this is just like what you teach. I say, show me first. So you see, they talked about Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacles. They talked about now, I didn't get any of this. All this is in the Bible. So they took fragments. It's what happens with people. I spoke about some of it yesterday when I talked about someone falling away from the truth. What you guys don't know historically is that some of the great cults and different things of the earth, that there were people who were once in the church hanging around the apostles. Then off they went. Have you not read John say they were with us but no more? They departed and created unbelievable creatures. You see, because you don't know the history, you don't know it's happening today too. That someone can sit here, look at what we say. You know already, it's when you look at these patterns that the Lord brings out from his word, ah, you could pick one piece and form a whole group. 
you shout it loud enough, people will be impressed. Oh, wow, I've never seen it like that. Wow. It's why it's dangerous to emphasize only one thing. Because people will flock to this new information. They will flock to this new thing. And you picked it from somewhere and emphasized it to the detriment of all the full gospel. So it's not the full gospel you're teaching. You're teaching a tiny portion of the gospel. And then in that gap, you fill it with error, error, error. And people will ignore your error and go with the impressive revelation. I've never seen it like this. Five stages of Christian go. Oh, this insight. Ah, then you dwell on it. You spend every day talking about the thousand, two thousand. You spend every day doing maths. Then you start calculating. So now you start, you keep calculating. Every time they find it, you're doing calculation. Next thing you form Jehovah's Witnesses. That's what happens. It's not healthy. You go into error. Once you pick an area and only talk about that. And even when you talk about it, you're talking about it as though. See, it's only us that found out these dates. See, we are the only ones. I hope you know everybody. The moment anything teaching in your head tells you you're the only anything, you're in trouble. The moment you think you're the only, our group is D. We are D. The moment you think it, off you go into error. Jesus calmly, let me say God so you're comfortable. Calmly tells Elijah, and by the way, there are 7,000 I've kept for myself who have not bowed to bow. Calmly, 7,000. The man thought he was the only one. Almost. And he's told there are 7,000. 7,000 is the one. Is How many of you know that's significant? Even though his emphasis was that it was, they've killed all the prophets except him. God didn't say that these 7,000 are prophets. He just said that there are 7,000 in Israel whom the Lord has reserved. I told you this, the elect. Okay. I know I have to take questions, but let me make sure I've finished. Because sometimes you guys don't ask proper questions. There are new people that are very cowardly. They don't ask questions. They, ask, they think because others don't ask that they don't know the answer. You should ask questions where you have the chance. The kingdom of God is the nation, the holy nation. Peter speaks about referring to Exodus. The holy nation. It says you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Called to show forth the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. First Peter 2. Verse 9. Now, do you notice that, that they are a holy nation? They are a chosen people. They are a people for God's own possession. They are to proclaim the virtues of him who called you. Now, let me ask you a question. Everybody, look at me. When you read this, like a typical Christian, if they ask you, Abi, you say this is your portion, that this is it. Right? That you're chosen. So someone is going to say, if I tell you you are called, but you need to press on to be chosen, you're going to say, nope, I'm a chosen people, yes? Good. So that's how to be careless and enter trouble. How? Let me show you. We are to do what? Proclaim the virtues of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can I ask you a question? Are many Christians proclaiming evangelizing in this world. If there are 100 Christians, born again Christians all over the world, how many of them do you think evangelize normally, go around proclaiming the virtues of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light? Oh yeah, let's pretend. Okay, say over 10. Let's pretend there are 10. Put all Christians on earth into 10. How many do you think evangelize? Not use yourself to assess. Talk to me. Not percent is over 10. So it cannot be percent. Two out of 10 Christians all over the world 
evangelize regularly. You know, I'm about to get personal. I assume people will be standing and sitting. I assume start doing testing. Talk now. Someone says 0 0.001. Some people are saying 1 over 10. <laughs> How many of you make it a duty to evangelize every week? Once every week. Raise your hand. Just raise it. Some of you are like, eh? You cannot see we are in trouble. I said once a week. Oh. Now, this is a church. I know most people are in the overflow. Lots of new people up here, but... This is a church where we emphasize evangelism. Yes? Habitually, we talk about these things. And it's like this. And how do you think it's where you came from? You still think it's one? You think it's 0.5? People of God, you cannot find hope if you'll be telling lies. Uh, it is far worse than you can comprehend. I'm asking you, if you are not one who proclaims the virtues of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If I ask you how many times you have told your life testimony, should I ask, how many times have you told about how you were called out of darkness into his marvelous light? Should I pass the mic and ask you now? All those that have told it once, all those that have not told it yet, raise your hands. Raise it fast. We have many people to ask questions. Put down your hands. All those that have told it once in a testimony on a mic, raise your hand or not on a mic. You shared it with someone, your life testimony, how you came out of darkness into light. Once. Put down your hand. Those that have shared it twice, not in one place, to another group. You went away to share it to another person, a group, whoever. Those that have shared it thrice, Those that have said it, you believe, up to 10 times. You have said your testimony up to 10 times. If I pass the mic down, you see many of these hands will go down because they don't speak proper English. You shared it where? Where do you say it? Individuals. Your life testimony. Your life testimony. Your life testimony. You see, it has started fragmenting. You see, you see. Uh, let me not waste our time with going well. The Bible says we are to proclaim the virtue of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The average person is ashamed of his testimony. After they were told the first time, you have to tell of God's goodness. You have to tell of what God did for you. You struggled and came and shared it small. Uh, I want to confess that. Um, uh, other than that, you are ashamed. How can they know about how bad I was? You even start amending it. You amend it left, right, and center. You change it, change it. By the time you finish, we can't recognize who you're talking about. Because we don't know your past. Is there anyone who knew you before or who had your original testimony? Now you were born uh, St. Mary. You were born the righteousness of God. All things are passed away. But you had to proclaim the virtue of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You had to proclaim it. You had to proclaim it, his virtue. I was lost, I'm found. I was blind, I see. I was a captive. Jesus set me free. This is my story. Years ago, we asked people, write your testimony. And it's better done when it is fresh. And we began to put out testimonies online. I've told you, it's not everybody you can see. You sit next to someone in the KK, you say, would you like to hear my testimony? You won't believe it. Let me send you the link. Give me your number. Send them the link. Do you know how many people want to reach out to you and say, excuse me, this thing you're saying, is it true? I remember years ago when we printed a small part of someone's testimony because we couldn't afford. So we just brought a tiny piece. One testimony, maybe 10 pieces of 14. We just pick up one piece of part 1, 2, 3, 4, to 14. We pick up one piece. And people looked at it on the way and said, it is a lie, it's a lie. No, 
Nobody can open up like this. Nobody. Nobody can open up. Ta, it's a lie. Because people do not believe. And one reason so few people are led to Christ. And everybody goes around talking about, you know, well, me, I'm not a preacher. Who said you need to be a preacher for, to bring people to Jesus? You could bring people to Jesus every day if you would try. But you don't care. As long as Jesus sets you free, let the rest go to hell. You are supposed to tell what God has done for you. The Bible says that they told the man that was formerly the demoniac of the gatherings. He told him, go and tell your family and friends what great things God has done for you. Do you know we don't tell people enough what God has done? Even if you tell, you want to tell about money. Money stories do not make people follow Jesus. Tell people stories about freedom from captivity, from blindness, from bondage, from sin, from wickedness, from being an evil person. Get the story, own it, then tell it. Because human beings are meant to have hope from seeing others delivered. When they hear you say, they go, his story sounds worse than mine. If God could do it for him, he can do it for me. Please, do you think God could do this thing you said for me too? What did you do? But here, there's a whole generation. What do you think Paul meant when he said, I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ? What's the good news? The good news is that he saved you. And good news must be combined with obedience. The worst thing that has happened to us is having a version of good news that does not involve your obey. You're not to be ashamed. Why would he talk about shame? Because we get ashamed. We become proud. We become prideful. We start saying, well, everybody knows I'm a good person. Now I have, everybody has to know. I, I, nobody should, can know my past. So you have become ashamed of the good thing God did for you. If more people knew the pits God dragged you out from, so many more would say, drag me out too. But they don't know God dragged you out from a pit. They thought, God, you were born on the bed of royal goodness. So they look and say, I can never be like you. You, all, you know, you are, you are born the righteousness of God. I can't be like them. Look at all of them, righteous and holy, perfect. I am the filthy one. I'm not worthy to be here. But if they could hear, if they could continually hear proclaimed the goodness of God, continually, not once in a while. That whole attitude of, oh, I used to tell my testimony. That was four years ago. But no, these days I just preach the word. That's a deception of Satan. You are called to proclaim the goodness and virtues of the one who called you out of darkness, called you out of darkness. You came out of darkness. Tell your story of your exit from darkness. It's not me, you. It's you that was called out of darkness. Identify your own journey. That is when you tell them about, oh, and then so, so and so, a person, my roommate preached to me. And I remember as I came to a meeting for the first time, I heard this. And then I heard this. And then I heard this. Sometimes you say, oh, and then at the beginning, I went to this place. I learned this, this, this. But after a while, I discovered that this, this, this. So I now, God now led me to this other place. It is while I was there. I still had bondage in this area. I was still in darkness in one, two, three, four, five. God began to break that free. In the first year I came, 2018, this happened. Some month later, this other one happened. The journey out of darkness, the journey out of Egypt is what strikes people's hearts and makes them go, if God has done it for you, he surely can do it for me. And then they say, what should we do? They ask you and you say, come with me. They ask, they say, if, if I come there, will, do you think I too will be set free? And you say, absolutely. If he set me free, why won't he set you free? He doesn't love me more than you. But if you say, as lazy Christians say, say, it's okay, don't worry, God will help you. God will help you, eh? God will help you. Is that how God helped you? 
when you told God will help you and they walked away, you must be a helper. People refuse to help. Peter doesn't fall into the water. Help me, Lord, as he sank. And he says, God will help you. No, he grabs him and pulls him out. You must be a practical messenger of deliverance, of salvation, of help. Remember, we are not just speaking now of people that are not born again. We are speaking about people that are born again. They are in the majority. Prisoners. They are born again, but they are in captivity all around. All over our nation, all over your workplace, all over your school, wherever you find yourself, your neighborhood, people are in bondage all around. If all you did was walk around, tell stories, excuse me, hi, good afternoon. I, please, can I tell you my story? No, I didn't come to ask for money. I want to tell you about my past. How many of you know people like hearing stories? And you said, what I'm about to tell you is 100% truth. Who has ever been told a story of a horrible past by someone, not in church meeting? Someone sat down, like, I want to confess, open up. Who has ever heard such a story? Were you fascinated? Did you stay and listen? Why don't we tell our stories? Because we want to. We are, the righteousness of Jesus. It's a terrible deception. So many more people would be saved if we, if we told our darkness to light story. And we have to tell our darkness to light story. Whatever God has done for you, he wants to do it for others. If this is not like, okay, this is a good idea. No. Fix times. Fix. Be precise. Or tell God, show me whenever there's a chance to do it. And do it. Have the short version. Have the medium-sized version. Have the long version. The one-hour version. Have the 30 minute version. Have the 10 minute version. Have the two minute version. This keke will last for two minutes. This drop I'm taking. Say hi, I'd like to tell you something quickly about myself. Ahead of time on a piece of paper, you can have your phone number. When I was 17, I had my first abortion. Start with something that first gives them an uppercut. Boom. You know? By the time I was 23, I'd had three. During this time, I was a member of the choir. I was the this, the that, the that, the that, the that, the that. Just talk, 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 talk. It could be to anybody, an old man, an old woman, a young woman, a teenager, anybody. But something happened. Oh, you're dropping here. Okay, here's my number. I can tell you the rest on the phone. You just snagged someone who might be true. Now, it may not be for that man. We've had people do that when our people went out to preach. And they say, please wait. Let me call my daughter. Let me call my daughter for you. People have done that. And they go and call their daughter and say, come. There's somebody. I want um, the fields are ripe for harvest. The fields are ripe for harvest. The fields are ripe for harvest. You're wondering why you need to harvest them? Because that army we were praying about, please listen, there are two armies. Again, we have new people here. You've never heard these things before. There are two armies. One is the kingdom of darkness's army. The head is Satan. One is the kingdom of light's army. The head is Christ. These two armies are going to clash fantastically like never before at the end of the age these two armies will clash i know you don't believe it the typical person cannot believe it but you will be in one of those armies and you say now i'm a child of god i can never be in satan's army i can assure you if you're not in the army of jesus almost 100 percent sure you will be in the army of satan no matter how you feel about that, it won't happen. It's because you have not seen what will play out. When it begins to play out, you must choose a side. You're hoping you can sit on the fence, but the secular went out long ago that the fence belongs to Satan. You didn't hear? The fence. So I'm sitting on the fence. Mm -mm, the fence, now Satan get up. That's part of his side. 
So if you're on the fence, you're on his side. But I just want to be a citizen. You'll be a captive. And I've told you, even natural wars, they always kill more civilians. Civilians, are the, you can't, in a time when people are carrying weapons of darkness, unleashing mayhem, and you're weaponless, you don't know how to fight. You have not learned warfare. You have not sat at the feet of the Lord and learned his ways. You don't know when to deploy love, patience, kindness, long-suffering. Oh, you thought it is prayer. I bind you, I cast you down, I destroy you. That's only part of how we fight in the kingdom of light. Sometimes all you deploy is love. For real. A hug. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Forgive me. I'm sorry. That can accomplish more than one week of dry fasting. Not, listen, before some of you like to be confused. I didn't say you should go around. It. Don't be confused. Don't confuse people. They won't know. They'll be asking, what's, what's wrong with you? What is okay? <clears throat> you may have had a quarrel with this person and you've been trying to settle, arguing, trying to prove yourself right. And God tells you finally, come here. You, you finally say, God, what? Help me. You are the one that does not know this is a battle for your brother or your sister. You don't know it's a battle. But if you seek the Lord's face and he says, Go and apologize for what you did. And you did it. God has given you a strategy to win this battle. What's the battle? Jesus said in Matthew 18, he said, you have gained your brother. That was the battle. What was Satan's attack? To take away your brother from you. But you have gained him. That's, that's the opposite of losing. You have gained. Again, you may not think this is a battle, but it's a serious battle in the future. You, you may be meant to fight side by side with this person and take cities. If Satan can see the future, like he saw Jesus about when he was born, Moses about to be born, and he started killing babies. Satan sees things, so he comes ahead to destroy it. Have understanding. Warfare is not just about being on the battlefield shouting, ah, get, 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 get. ah. No, that's not warfare. How many of you know? There are battles that are ended before they be gone. One effective spy. One effective spy. In your place, looks around, places three bombs at the base of your, your big guns and leaves. The place blows up and there's never any casualty. By the time your, your own soldiers land and storm that place, there's no resistance because he had destroyed their machine guns do you understand this war and battle must not be and what's the strategy for winning war obedience obedience is the strategy for winning all battles obedience to god now another time you think that the way to settle the issue with another brother or sister is to say it's okay forgive me did you ask god the way to settle is to say excuse me please sit down Let's address this matter. You have been saying this thing. You are wrong. You are utterly wrong. What you are saying is a falsehood and you can't keep saying it and things go out well. No, 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 no. Uh, let's call witnesses, please. One, two, three, please come. Uh, this person said I said and has been saying I should apologize. Please, can you tell me your, what you know, what you know, what you know? And they say it. If you ever think, and we've fought battles for a while, believe me. If you ever come up with one method and say this is how to fight all battles, you will lose, the kingdom of God will lose big time for your lack of instructions. You don't stay here and make instructions. You call headquarters. You get instructions from the ranks. You, get, you receive counsel. Then you know how to fight. You don't say, I remember last time how we fought it. We ran out shouting, ah, shooting. That's how we overwhelmed them. That may not be the method this time. The method may be to run. Ah, God can never run. Jesus used to run. Who did you say you are again? Jesus won battles by running. 
and won battles by confronting. He won battles by keeping quiet and won battles by speaking. Go and read John chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Read it. Read Jesus. Study Jesus. And watch if he followed that your method. There are times the Bible says he escaped from their hands and hid himself away. And you have a theory that says a servant of God can never run away. You are getting ideas from your head. Why did he do certain things? His disciples told him, Master, he said, let's go out. But uh, Lazarus is in short dead. Let's go and raise him. They said, our master, they were just trying to kill you and you're going out. He began to teach them. He said, you don't understand. There are 12 hours in a day. When you walk during the day, you can't stumble. You can't miss it. But night is coming when no one can walk. He explained to them how it was. Now, the people didn't understand that shortly before when he was hiding away, that it was not time to walk. That the time had changed. That it was now time to walk. Is this clear? That is why you don't listen to God once. Again, this is how servants of God have made big mistakes. They said, I remember what God told me in 1979. Hey, Jesus, sir. You mean God has refused to talk to you since 1979? Lord God. These things I'm saying, I know I'm saying in a funny way, but it's very serious. This is how you have whole denominations in error. Whole denominations. Did I tell you about apostolic faith church some days ago? Don't take medication. Don't take any medication. And then 2015. It's okay to take medication. We apologize. Because God was teaching people faith in him. Trusting in his ability to heal. You know how to care maybe the law. Did he tell you to impose it? People will be kicked out of the church for taking medication. Faith tabernacle is still like that. They, are, they will be dying up and down. Then some, in the midst of that, that are still members of church, have gone behind to get herbs. Some evil treatment, juju treatment. See, you have pushed them into the hands of Satan. Now they are hypocrites and this pretending. That error you are teaching, the church in Nigeria in the 50s, it split in a major way. Groups that were CAC. If you hear some of the history, you will not believe some of the... You think you know why church... You think church groups just form. People just... If you know how many church groups form as a result of a quarrel, now, that's not the proper way new groups should form. New groups should form because we sit here and I say, ah, God said they should start. He needs someone to start a walk in uh, Eketo. Eh? And as we are praying, God has revealed you, brother, to four different people. So let's pray and wait on the Lord and ask him, Lord, is it? And God has confirmed it. Say, yes, I've always known. Eket God spoke to me first in 2011. Very good. So get ready. Let's ask God about the timing. Ah, by next year. October. Now, depending on how much you know, there are people, the moment we say it, off they go. They go and resign from their job or leave their school and off they go to a catch. But if you are more educated in the ways of God, like God has helped some of us to learn, we will tell you, no, don't do like that. Pray. How many of you have seen men of God that in quotes, we're obeying God, but suffer a lot? Hunger and all that. Mm -hmm. So this is where knowledge is power. So this other one that knows that you're meant to ask God, you're meant to inquire. Pauses and you inquire. And God speaks. By this time next year. Now in your human mind. you because if you have, This is the beauty of having been taught. At the feet of scriptures. You would presume. Uh -uh, how can it be next year October. And God is saying it now. You have not met God. That's exactly how God operates. He's so coordinated. He can give you a whole year to get ready. Don't you think it's a wonderful thing to have one year to get ready? But your understanding is that, no, no, I read in the Bible that the very night he spoke to Joseph, he got up and ran with Mary. 
Did he tell you, stand up now and run? No, no, I, I, I know what God said to me. I, I, I know what God said to me. And this is where you have sometimes, you know, church members who in their mind, they say, yes, I appreciate what God says through this servant of God, but, um, but as I am here, so. When God speaks to someone, it's private. It's private. You have a lot of scars in this life. Because you think you know something the man of God doesn't know. Are there men of God that don't know? Yes. Are there many servants of God that will try to control things to their benefit? Yes. You should have spent the time with whichever servant your servant of God you are with to learn and understand a bit of their weaknesses. Don't just know it in your head. Ask them. Talk about it. Talk to God. And be clear, is it a weakness or is it the will of God? Is it something he knows that I don't know? There are those who think they know. Then there are those, there are servants of God who, like I said, they've only learned parts. There's parts they don't know. So you hear people say things like, God can never pass me to come and speak to you. Who has heard these things? Did God pass Eli, the high priest, and speak to Samuel? Huh? So, so what's that? Now the truth is, God had already spoken to Eli, the high priest, earlier on. How many of you have heard the oil flows from the, from the head? Which interpreted in plain Nigerian language means, God can never speak to you to come and speak to me. It's me that will speak to you. How many of you know that's not true? Oh, you don't know. In spite of, I gave you Samuel and Eli. I should give you more. God constantly can speak to someone that rather what the person above who was not spoken to should take note of is that they should go and ask God, is it true? Did God speak to Mary before she spoke to Joseph? Huh? Who is the head in that family? So why did God speak to Mary first and then Joseph had to get confirmation after I wanted to put away the woman? Because you can't tell God what to do that much. You can request nicely. But don't act like, no, God would never do this. All this talk about never. God can never. God can never speak to you through a stranger. God can never speak to you through a subordinate. Question, define subordinate. Who is your subordinate? In what? If God can speak through little children, Jeremiah may have been about 12, 13 years old. He was from a family of priests. God skipped all of them and spoke to the small boy who immediately said, I'm a youth, I'm a child. I can't speak. John the Baptist. I could go on. Just understand this. God can do anything he wants. There are two armies. There is battles to be fought. God will raise people and use them. (coughs) From either side. You must decide to allow. If you don't listen to truth, you will be on the side of error. Those church groups went into error because they held on to some revelation they thought they had. To the detriment of the other revelation. That's like having a finger and not having tools. That's like having an ear, not having lips. You come out deformed. Every time the body of Christ holds on to certain things and throws away the other part. Okay, because you discover that God would like to provide for you. That you don't have to be poor and wretched. That means you should build a whole, a whole denomination of making money. Saying God said you should be rich. Are you real? I agree. You have heard me when I'm preaching talk about the spirit of poverty. And people have it. They can have a job where they pay them 350000 every month and they are poor. At the same time. It's a spirit of poverty. That's a demonic spirit. Then there are people, and I did that two weeks ago or so. <coughs> when I was speaking about how to save. Is it last week? How to use money? properly how to be frugal with what you have how not to be wasteful 
that you can be richer as a poor person. You can be a richer, poor person. And I told you, what's the definition of poverty? Do you have food to eat and clothes to wear? You're not poor. Then I also told you that some of you, while you're poor, it's because you're wearing your food. You're wearing your food. The money God gave you to eat with, you bought clothes. You're not even poor. You're just confused. You bought a 13,000 Naira dress. How many? That's two weeks of eating. Or, or so. You bought a dress with it. Why did you buy it? And okay, the, uh, my class, uh, uh, one of our class members uh, is wedding. You better eat well when you go for that occasion. <laughs> better eat well. Carry extra. Find someone and beg. Can I put this in your freezer? Don't be warming it. Silly child. And you have people doing this everywhere. Say, no, I just, I just closed my eyes and brought that money and bought it. Any normal human being that can close their eyes while walking. <coughs> what do I need to say about them? You cannot be closing your eyes. Close your eyes and do it. Anything that involves closing your eyes to do is not good. Open your eyes now. Open your eyes. And God will help you. Only close your eyes when you're looking onto Jesus. Other than that, keep your eyes open. How much do you say this thing is? It's okay, don't worry. You entered the shop. You were sincere. You wanted, well, for once, let me just. You thought the price is 3000 at most, four. They started with, this one is 32. Why are you still standing there? <laughs> what are you standing there? Why are you holding it in your hand, checking? Why are you checking? You didn't hear what they said? Something that I merely say, oh, sorry, wrong shop. <laughs> then you go, at once. Off you go, at once. You don't detect, you start, you start saying, well, I, I just say maybe, well, you never know, you know, what God cannot do does not exist. <laughs> it's true. When hunger grabs you, that God can make you hungry does not exist. He can. What God cannot do, including beating a foolish child. Don't leave the place. So these are the ways. I believe in having sufficiency in all things. Is that in the Bible? Yes, in all, su all sufficiency in all things. And there are conditions to attain that. Amongst that includes generosity. The scriptures say so. generosity. 2 Corinthians tells you, it gives you a list of things that will help you abound. He says giving to the poor, causing your gifts, giving gifts to the poor, giving, supporting those who support. So let's say you're in a place where the poor are supported. A proper ministry like ours. And then we are constantly assisting the poor. Then you say, I'll make sure I don't just give normal offering. I'll give, I'll be giving a lot because this, so it's in the Bible, these apostles, good stewards. So they would give to them and they would give to whoever had need. That was the Bible method. It's not very popular now. And then you come across such a place and you say, oh, no, I've given my offering. No, no, but anytime they announce, anytime they say there's a need in church, we, I always respond. Don't be ridiculous. You're not very wise. If you have, the Bible says, know those who labor amongst you. Esteem them highly for their work's sake. That's why you should know them. That's why you should know where you are and who. You, under, you should know. All that stuff about not knowing. Well, it's not your duty to know about a man of God. It's not your duty. You, how, who has heard that one too? How many of you know there's all sorts of upside down wisdom? The, the exact opposite of what the Bible says. The Bible says you should know those who labor amongst you. Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said, Timothy, you have known my way of life. Give me this passage you just put up. Read with me 1 Thessalonians 5.12.
Have you seen that? Acknowledge them. And it tells you the kind, the ones who are diligent. Not the ones that are not diligent. They are leaders that are not diligent, just doing anything that goes, just shouting, I'm your leader, I'm your leader. And they don't care for you diligently. I remember years ago, I had to point out to our people, say, because the leaders here are, act like normal brethren, but they have given you more attention in one month than all the attention you received in your whole life. Since you went to church, since you were born. In one month, they have sat down with you for more hours, listening to you, talking to you, paying attention. How many hours did you spend? For the majority of people, when did you sit down with a pastoral staff and they listen to you for hours? You have their number, you could send them messages up and down. They ask you for nothing. Zero pressure ever. They don't ever ask you for if anything, they are giving you. Because there's something funny that happens in the human head. The Bible didn't say acknowledge those that have the title pastor and command presence and speak gruffly. Hello, how are you? How are you, young lady? He didn't say acknowledge those that appear authoritative. Are you listening to me? It didn't say acknowledge those who command presence. Who has heard messages that sound like that? No, ah, that you know, you in, when that you you can walk in the path of God, you command authority, and people will just the wealth of the nations will flow to you. Who has heard these sounds? You see, these are the kinds of things in the body of Christ that make me look and keep wondering. Why won't you read your Bible? The Bible tells you who to acknowledge. And none of it involves height, education, authority, even power. Who did he say you should acknowledge? Those who do what? Where's your microphone? Brethren, acknowledge. Work with diligently among you. How do you know who to acknowledge? Are they walking? Are they walking in your midst? Are they doing it diligently? That's all. You don't know what it means to acknowledge someone? Accord them the regard that is theirs. And that's not just word of mouth. Oh, this is the person who helped me. Oh, this is my pastor. Oh, this is my shepherd. Oh, this is my disciple. You acknowledge not just in words, in your giving. Is that in the Bible? It's in the scriptures. It says, let him who is taught share with him that teaches him, instructs him in all good things. It says it directly. But in the minds, oh, um, and this is true. Oh, yeah, oh, oh the basket is coming, the offering basket. That's 200 there. You have 500. Give me change. Yeah, give me, I'll give, later on, you give me the change. <laughs> I know his name. I know his name. His name is wonderful. I know his name. I know his name. Do you know his name? His name is Counselor. I know it. That's it. Ah, preacher X is here. Oh, woo! Yes, God, Jesus, touch me, touch me, touch me. How long is he spending town? Ah, just today. Oh, tomorrow morning session. Hey, yeah, I'll be at work. Ah, it's okay, God, please. Let all my oh. We are passing the offering basket. Jesus. It's my seat. Do you have envelope? Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. You see, that thing, that thing I talked about, that thing that eats people's brain. 
has eaten your spiritual brain. So why did you give a big offering to someone you don't know? He doesn't labor among you. He has come, he will go. Why should you give an offering? You should give an offering because he's carrying the gospel around. Praise God. He's an evangelist. Does he have a support base? I believe so. Should you still support more? Yes. Even the people that hosted him, did they use fuel? Yes. How much did the fuel cost? I don't know. 50000 Okay. So should I support that they gave me a seat to sit and all that? Yes. So should I give yes? Now I'm pretending there was zero pressure for money. People were really blessed. So they gave. This is the one time I'm seeing him. I can give him something. Reasonable. If it gets to him, it might just get to the host minister. And that's it. But what is that thing in you that looks for change? When you're in the midst of those who labor diligently among you, that thing is the maggot I'm referring to. It's linked to your love for money, teaching. It's in your head somewhere. That when you can give money, it's going to create. Now, God can tell you to give exceptionally. To anybody, anywhere. Obey God always. Are you hearing me? But I'm saying the mindset that gives according to the size of the name. The scripture did not say acknowledge those with great names among you. It's clear. He tells you who to acknowledge. Who is the one laboring diligently among you? That is the one you should acknowledge. He, he went on to explain, in case you don't understand, who preside over you in the Lord and give you instruction. Who stands and says, now listen, part one, number two. So what you have done is you have acknowledged the one who does not labor among you, who is passing through. You have acknowledged that one. You have Acknowledge someone that does not preside over you and does not give you instruction. So you've done everything opposite to the word of the Lord. If you were the Lord, how would you handle this? And in your mind, you'll be thinking, ah, God knows that. It's because you have drunk false doctrine somewhere. You've had, let me tell you the kind of stories they tell. I traveled. Or I had the privilege of sitting under the da, 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 da. When the meeting went on, I emptied my account and sold it. Bia. Bia here. Bia. Bia, let's visit the scripture. Come. What did this place we just read say? Did you see how it stressed that the people are walking diligently? Do you know one meeting, three meetings cannot amount to diligence? Do you know what the word diligent means? Step by step. Level by level, carefully. The very concept. Now, for the person who is slightly confused, do you realize that the book, First Thessalonians, was written by Paul? Do you realize Paul was a traveling apostle moving around preaching? Do you realize here that he's talking about the leadership in the church in Thessalonica and that not, that does not include him? Oh, your brain is struggling. The passage, what Paul is saying here, he's, he's clear. He said, acknowledge those who walk diligently among you. Paul is not speaking of himself. He's speaking about the church leadership in Thessalonica. And he's instructing them that they should regard and care for and provide for those who are serving and presiding over them. Paul was not presiding over them. At least not directly. He was a father in the spirit to that church. He had helped establish that church. And definitely they should support him. And I believe they did. The Philippians did. And others. They would send. But if it goes with how I understand how the church operated. It is from the giving. It's like a local assembly like this. You give here. We 
as a church, as a leadership, sometimes I tell the whole church, sometimes we don't. Then we can quietly support different things. Apart from supporting the need in the house, we, are sup we can support needs outside the house, directly and indirectly. Mission efforts, things concerning the kingdom being extended. In other states, sometimes it can be in other countries. That's happening. We don't really have a method here, at least here. I'm, we should, but we don't. Because I don't talk about money almost at all. You know, where we make it more public. Hey, everybody, we are doing this. Hey, we are, every time we are doing something, we don't tell. It's rare that we tell. That we have done this, we have done this, we have done this. And when we do tell, people express support. And every time I realize, ah, so what if I did, so what about the 100 times I didn't tell? If I told, would they have? My attitude is that, well, if they are giving generously already from what they have, that's enough. Take out of that and do this thing. The truth is, if you told, they would give more. But for those who do not love to torment God's children, you don't like telling people things. You don't want them to feel burdened. My attitude is that give generously. That's how wise people give. And that's enough. If it's extra need, then we may tell. If we remember. These are the scriptures. What's the scripture in, 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 in 2 Timothy 3? He said, you have known... You have observed in verse 10. Timothy was talking to, have observed my teaching. What should you observe about servants of God? I've done a teaching on this. Find it and listen to it. Observe what they teach. Do you understand to observe does not mean just swallow. You don't know what observe means. It means to pay attention and practice. He said, you've observed my teaching. You've observed my conduct. You've observed my purpose. My faith, my patience, my love, my perseverance. Once in a while I speak with someone, I realize they have not been observing me. They are still running on how they were. You listen to someone, you're talking to someone, and, and I'm, I, I'm amazed. I'm in pain. Like, wow, so you just listened to some of the things. You didn't learn anything about my patience. Though. You didn't watch how I love. So you still don't know how to love. You don't care. You don't care about loving. You're supposed to learn how to love. You're going to go and shout and be angry with her. When someone did that same thing to me four times and you saw, is that how I reacted? Answer is no. You saw me keep quiet. You saw me go, mm. You saw me... Later, when you ask me something, I say, it's okay, maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow or next week as God gives me grace. But if I talk now, it will lead to, you know, it's not something uh, that is a, it's, there's no urgency about it. It's not good to speak in anger. You saw all of that inside your mind. You went like, hmm, that's your own. That's your own. Ma, I can never take it. Can never take it. So, so you, didn't, you didn't observe my love. My patience. You didn't learn from it. You know. That's not how to learn from someone. Except the person is wrong. Now you don't learn bad things. Are you hearing me? You don't learn bad things. When someone does what is not good, don't learn from them. Don't learn error. Learn what is good. So your pastor, your the, those who preside over you, may have areas where they are wrong. Their teaching may be wrong. Don't copy them. They, are, they may lack patience. Always get into one problem. You can observe it. Say, ah, I remember my pastor. Ah, every time. When they just bring out one thing, you go and invest inside. Ah, that man lost money. Not less than seven different ventures. He lost money. You see, you cannot learn patience from him. Are, are you hearing me? He does not have it. You can observe. You observe his conduct. You observe his attitude towards money. You heard him say, come, come. So the meeting you went for, did they give offering? You didn't raise offering? Come here. You have to be raising offering. Why you not raise offering? You know, you know you're, you should be asking when to move. Or you're going to be corrupted with the practice. Paul was, could proudly say, you've observed me. 
my teachings and my conduct and my patience, my love. You've seen me endure. You've seen me overlook. You've seen me endure slight. You've seen, learn from me. This is why he said of Timothy, there is only Timothy that was truly like a son to him. That other people were not like that. You see, people act like if you listen to a preacher, that means you are like him. You're not. Till you're observing what they, if they are a good example, copy them. If they are not, if they, they depart from scripture in some area, make sure you don't just presume they have departed from scripture. You know you can presume in your head and you're wrong. They may be scriptural. Your belief may be that whenever someone preaches, he should always be gentle, composed, like Derek Prince, or maybe like Pastor Kumuyi. If someone offends you, forgive him. It is the will of the Father not to bear grudges. So you may believe preachers should not move. They should stand in one place. The prince wouldn't move more than this. Then if he's agitated, he... that's it. If he's casting out demons, the same thing. Every spirit, he may wag his finger. Every spirit. I know uh, why I'm saying cast out demons because you're going to think, okay, no, he's, he's a teacher. Was a teacher? He cast out demons everywhere. <laughs> he was. <laughs> He, he prayed for healing. Le people's legs will grow out. Short legs will grow out like this. As calm as he was. So it's not about the packaging. Do you get? Some people will somersault. Believe <laughs> me. Angels, the angels are always like, hold him, hold him, hold him. <laughs> he said, you have known these things. My persecutions and the sufferings that came upon me. You're supposed to know the people you follow. You're not supposed not to care about it. You're not supposed to say no. No, it doesn't matter. All I'm interested in what is in what they teach. Don't be ridiculous. That you sound intelligent, but you're not. You just saw a list of things you should observe. You don't care. You go and observe. You pick one. Say it's just his teaching. Then you heard a story about him. Seven girls have come out to say he had an affair with them. You say, I don't care. You see, the Bible you hold upside down. No, you're to observe his conduct. Oh God, go back now. Okay, this is it. You see, as you're looking at me, you're saying, well, pastor, well, I think that is your take. On judgment day, this book will be used to judge you. This book. You're to observe his conduct. I heard he was involved in this scandal. They caught him here telling lies. They found out that the prophecies he gave was fake. Not because they didn't come to pass. But he copied them from some book they found. He, he copied. His conduct is not straight. They've caught him. He's caught up in some scandal involving money laundering. Something wrong. You say, I, I, I don't care. I, I, I don't care about any of that. What Jesus called us to was to be. You see, you look intelligent and we thought you were. Till we discover you don't care what the Bible says. You are to observe his conduct. You are to observe his purpose. Always ask yourself when you watch and follow a servant of God, read their books, whatever. Say, so what's the purpose of these things he's teaching? Have you noticed everything tilts towards that Christians should be rich, should be leaders on this earth? You have refused to observe his purpose. Always ask yourself, this push, this pastor Itana, that is pushing us since morning or afternoon, whenever he started preaching. Where is he pushing us to? What's his purpose? I'm going to give you a moment to think about that. Think of some of the preachers. Some of you had a favorite preacher before now. What is their purpose? 
how you know their purpose, in which direction were they usually pushing. That's how you know purpose. If they are heading towards the exit, their purpose is to remove you from the room. If they are pushing you towards the high seat, their purpose is to place you on a throne. If they are pushing you towards righteousness and holiness, their purpose is to make you righteous and holy. If they are pushing you towards the best job, the best car, the soonest spouse, their purpose is shown in what direction they push you. Have you understood these things? So you must observe the purpose of the preachers that you follow. After today, your excuse of ignorance is lost. You cannot say, I didn't know. Who has heard people say, it doesn't matter, just go, it's just their teaching, just follow their teaching. See, God has not called you, to, God, has, God has called you to, it's just learn what. Did you read this place when you took that and spread and used to tell other people? Don't spread error because it sounds intelligent. Go to school with your Bible, a pen and a notebook. As you're about to read, say, Father, teach me. Give me understanding. Take notes. You will stand up educated by the Holy Spirit who is supposed to teach you all things, not some things. The Holy Spirit is not to teach you some things. Then Pastor Ita teaches you some. You didn't hear me. The Holy Spirit should teach you some things, but I learned these other things from Bishop something. No, the Holy Spirit is to teach you all things. He said he would teach you all things. So the moment bishop, pastor, anybody, anything, is teaching you error, things that are contrary to what the spirit of truth has revealed in the Holy Scriptures, drop what he says. Except it's an interpretational error. Have you heard me? There's something like missing the interpretation. You may be missing it. You may be missing it. That man of God may be right. But if you check it and check it and check it and you see multiple scriptures confirming that that servant of God is in error. That he's just saying what is conducive for him. Conducive to his kind of ministry. And it's far more common than you know. <coughs> you should travel. You should, excuse me. You should support traveling ministry. You should support ministries that come and go. In this day and time. However, if you know. At least in the Nigerian church. You know many church groups. Many. It's the bigger church groups. You know already. Don't be a child forever. You know already that when they invited that preacher to come, that it doesn't matter what you do, whether I give one naira or not, that preacher will live with millions. He went and said, well, you know, I had to. Who are you deceiving? Then your small church with your pastor uh, uh, membership of 80 people, you always give peanuts. You have ignored the instruction of the Lord and gone with a snippet you watched online on YouTube where, where, where someone told stories about giving big money. And then the heavens opened over them. So you mean God has changed his mind? Say, I know I said before you should acknowledge those who lead you. But I've now looked at it. They are not very good vessels for release into bountifulness. So I am, um, I am, um, I'm changing the policy. From now on, I, I want you to sow into, what's that phrase? Into anointings. It's anointing, I've got it. An anointing that releases. An anointing that raises you higher. So did the Lord not know of this anointing when he says, when he told you that you should share what you have with those who teach you? And preside over you. Did he not know? Never go with what your ears and eyes see and hear. Because of the presence or courage of the person. You will disobey God. You will miscarry the purposes of God. And some people do it all their life. And they wonder, God, why are things how they are with me? I have done this. I have sown seed. I have done because you've sown in all the wrong ground. 20 something years ago, I heard a preacher say that you should sow into fruitful soil. Fertile. 
Don't be wasting time. Now, you know I don't know many things. It's long since I heard it, like 1998. That's long now. 25 years ago. So into fertile soil. And fertile soil just meant a big preacher. Is it still being preached? Uh, this was 25 years ago. Fertile soil. What, it, what makes it fertile? God said where you should sow to. You came up with a new method. If God told you in this meeting I'm standing now, he speaks to you, leads you. I want you to give this offering. Very significant. Do exactly what God says. If you are doing it because you believe God will touch you through that servant of God's ministry because you give big money. You are not serious. So you are buying the favor of God. If that person has a healing gift, you can't act like you have to pay for it. Give normal giving and say, God, touch me. In fact, that is why you barely get anything from your pastor. Because you give with that attitude of, see, I'm just giving so I can contribute towards one bob being on during a, a church meeting. Other than that, I wouldn't even give in this case. And you're wondering why God can't seem to touch you there or heal you there. He's not healing you because you have no expectation of Christ through the one who presides over you. And I'm speaking about churches everywhere. I'm not speaking about congregation necessarily. I mean, many of them have faith and have trusted the Lord to meet their needs, physical, spiritual, and otherwise here. And he has been kind, very kind to us. So I'm speaking to whoever is hearing me, wherever you're hearing, you carry this mindset. Drop it. Exchange this mindset. Pick a proper mindset. Always get your mindsets from the word of God. The pure word. How many questions do I have? Who has a question and you didn't write it in? Let me see. You have a question about something I said. You didn't write it in. At the end of the meeting, we'll pray. If you came during the week and, of course, um, you were not ministered to by the prophetic intercessory teams, when we are done, if I've prayed for you before as the first time, I will not pray for you again. But you will stay there or something. You tell them and they'll send you to the one of the prophetic intercessory teams and they'll share words of knowledge, words of prophecy or wisdom or discern, whatever they discern by the Spirit with you. That is our gift to you as a church. Apart from prayer, we will share of that which we have received, we will give to you. All right? And that would be that which the Lord speaks to us or deems fit to share with us. Okay? So that's for those who came during the week. Don't leave. Immediately we are done. Stay and get ministered to for a few minutes. A few minutes. You won't clap. You won't do anything. You just sit down. And um, if I have not prayed for you before, I will pray for you in the admin office. Then the prophetic teams will share prophetic counsel with you. All right, let me see. If Egypt represents the world, why did Jesus have to be sent to Egypt with his family? As a picture of, the, the Bible tells you that the scriptures has to be fulfilled. That says, out of Egypt I've called my son. So he had to go there so he could call him out. Jesus is a picture of the body of Christ. And all of you were in the world before Jesus saved you. You are the body of Christ. All right. So that's the reason. Jesus is a picture of many. The things in the Bible are the testify of Jesus. So he has to fulfill what was written concerning him according to the volume of the book. It is written concerning him, all sorts of things. That he's the Lamb of God. That he's the one who was lifted on the cross, the serpent that was lifted. And whoever looks at him will be saved. That he's the one who was Jonah three days and three days after. So this is what the Lord Jesus is. He's a picture of all these things. And this is one of the pictures of those who emerged from Egypt. The son of God. 
emerge from Egypt. Yes. You said power is for showing mercy. Could you prove this from the scriptures? Did I not prove it from the scriptures? Huh? Every time someone was healed, that was mercy they enjoyed. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. And what happened? Blind Bartimaeus gets healed. The power of God is used to show mercy. That's a major reason for the power of God. Even financial power is for showing mercy. I was just talking about money now. The correct thing to do with money, and I don't know if I told you how to have money, the principle of God. I say it's God. Obey God. What does God say you should do? He said you should be faithful. So be faithful wherever you are. What else does God say you should do? He said you should not be lazy. So be hard working. What else does God say you should do? He said you should not fail to work. That he that does not work should not eat. So work. Always look for a job. Don't depend on people and enjoy it. What else does God say you should do? God says you should give. He says there's the one in Proverbs who holds back and tends to lack. There's the one that gives generously and tends to increase. So God, these are all things about mercy. These are principles of making money. I'm telling you, uh, uh, okay, I, 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 I want to abound. But in spite of it, after you have abounded, he will say, Ephesians 4, he said, he that stole, don't steal anymore. Walk with your hand that which is good that you might have to give to him who has need. There are those who have need. Walk and give to them. God does not want you lazy. Now here you are lazy. You don't want to work because you cannot do that kind of job. All sorts of things you do. All sorts of disregard for the word of God. And then you say, I'm looking for principles of wealth. You've ignored all the direct, clear principles. And come up with one called sowing. When you give a lot of money, a lot of money will come to you. You haven't noticed you keep getting poorer and poorer. The more you sow around, that day you sowed, you walked home and it rained. Who has sowed money see before? That day you walk home, it rained. Raise your hand. It's a real question. I'm asking. You can't remember. You're going to pause and think. I'm going to give you a moment. I'm going to give you a moment. You were somewhere. You took your transport plus more. Sowed it. With a belief that it's a magic. You walked home. It rained. Raise your hand like this. Instead, obey God. All this crazy sowing. One of our brothers long ago told us of how he sowed. Huh? One of our brothers told us of how he sowed. He sowed while he was sowing. Right there as he was sowing. Thieves were robbing him in his shop. Four one nine. Not even th- not, they didn't even come with weapons. They used mouth and deceived this office girl. All sorts of deception has happened. Not see see every. All over Nigeria. Again, I only pity you small. If I pity you at all. You won't help your neighbor that is in need. But you don't have to sow big seed. So your need to, your background of, of, of magic has not left you. You like magic. Just bring out 10,000 now. You see, there's a special anointing I carry. Do you notice no anointing is mentioned there concerning acknowledging things? It, you didn't give me Galatians 5 or 6. Verse 6. Read it. Is this the same thing we just read in First Thessalonians? Read. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word must share in all good things with his instructor. Is that the same thing we saw? Huh? In First Thessalonians 5. Did he tell you to acknowledge those that preside over you and instruct you? You want witnesses? 
the Bible is clear. Do you know how many churches, local assemblies around the world, where the pastor would have been a much more anointed person, he would have been way more anointed, but he can't be because he's looking for money to meet his children's and family's needs because his church members give insufficient. So he, their pastor is poor. Do you know what happens when Levites lack? Have you read the book of Ezra and Nehemiah? The Bible says they leave the work of the temple and go to fields. They go and start looking for work. How many of you know that when you're out walking, busy, the sun is striking you, that it doesn't, it's not very conducive for spiritual revelation? You don't know. Do you know what happens when a servant of God sits in front of a Bible? I know. Be quiet. Especially a servant that instructs. That's a teacher. Heaven shifts down. Do you know what happens when they cannot do that? Apart from the grace of God and accumulated stores. Now, when that servant of God is out there walking from morning till four, his boss shouted at him three times because of an oversight. He was sent to Okwiboku to go and get something from the other office. He's running up and down while he's a servant of God on top. But he's also a civil servant. Hustling for his pension. Hi. And what do you say you expect from him again? He has borne the heat of this day in the sun. Then he comes and he's supposed to come and little lambs, how are you? Lambs of God. Sheep of God, how are you? and rub your head, and sit down, and gently attend to the flock. When? With which energy? Why is he dozing off? Why is he leaning on me? Am I a pillow? Am I a pillow? You see, you have distorted reality. He told you, provide for those who instruct you. You said, no, I'll provide for those who are online. You see how that works? No, 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 send me a bank account number. Send me a bank account number. Let's send to these ministries. No, these ministries are really impactful. Do you think God knew? He said, provide for those who instruct teaching. And he explained it elsewhere. He said, not this. The other one we opened the other time. That you should give double honor especially to those who labor in the word and teaching. I'm giving you three witnesses today, three different passages. He's making the same point, that those who instruct, instruction is line upon line. That is those who carry you through, like a teacher, level by level. That's typically your pastors, those who care for you, who show you things. That's 1 Timothy 5.17. Elders who lead effectively. Please, elders means pastors. Please, the word is the word. Presbyterus, episcopus. Those are the words used throughout the Bible for the leaders in church. So the eldership of this church are the leaders in this church. Elders who lead effectively. Do you see? What's the word in First Thessalonians 5? Diligently. Are worthy of what? Double, Double honor. honor. And I showed you what honor means in Matthew 15. That the Lord Jesus said, you honor your parents by giving to them, by supporting them when they are old and cannot work well and you are of age. And he said, don't take that money and give it to the temple. Jesus said it directly. I've given you the passage. If you're not here, Matthew 15, go and read it. Jesus was very direct. He said that they were making the word of God useless. The Pharisees, scribes. He said, it is those who lead effectively that you're to honor. He didn't say you shouldn't give Christian leaders. He said, those who lead effectively. Lead who? Lead who? 
the whole body of Christ. Who do they lead? Your neighbor. They lead you. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your soul as those who must give account. Go back. First Timothy 5. 17. Elders who lead effectively are worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. He's very specific. He said, acknowledge them for their work's sake. He points out again, work, diligent work, work hard. He is clear. How can you possibly know a preacher works hard if it's impossible to know when they work hard? Tell me how you can know a teacher, a preacher is working hard. Talk now. Raise your hands. Answer questions. Huh? Are you a lazy congregation? A hungry one? A hungry one? By observing the fruits. Of That's the how you know they work hard. By observing the fruits. How else? The lives of his congregation. Are they being transformed? Moving from um, sin to righteousness. The fruit in the life of the congregation, are they being transformed? That's good. Yes, yes, yes. More hands. By putting love, showing love, consign with all his heart. He's working hard if he shows love with all his heart. That's heart matter. How do we know? I'm asking how, a, how you can know. The places we have read so far, do they seem to imply that you should know if the servant of the Lord is working hard. It seems to imply that you can know. Okay, is either you tell me how you know they are lazy or how do they work hard. Say one or the other. Yes, yes, yes. Raise your hand. The mic is by you. You know your sh they work hard if they flock in terms of shepherd and the sheep. If the flock is healthier. Someone already said it. You're repeating what has been said. Speak. See, listen to me, all of you. Hey, look at me. I expect many hands. Take another mic. Listen to me. For those that are not used to the church being a place for instruction, the church is for instruction. That's what it's for. The church is the pillar and the ground, foundation of truth. It is where you learn truth. This was always meant to be normal. This is how the early church was. This is how the church is meant to be. It's not a place for you to breathe in and receive blessings. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That's, the, that's part of what the church is for. A place for impartation for the priest to bless. I've commanded, he's given us a command to bless. That is part of. That's like saying your child went to school to only learn ABC. Would you not be very angry if they only taught them ABC? By the time they get to primary five, say your ABCs. Because they've been doing it since primary one. A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. Now they are wrapping it. Because they have said A, B, C till. It's very annoying to think the church is a place where you go and do one thing. No, you're to learn mathematics too. No, you're going to learn all sorts of things. We start simple and the higher it goes it gets more complicated yes no that is what the church was to be for you're supposed to increase line upon line that's what the church is for the church has not been accepted for what it is for as it should be and this is most unfortunate But I want you, even if this is your first time, so understand it. Don't look for churches where you play. Let's sing, let's dance, let's clap our hands. Bye. Uh, come back, put offering four times. Bye. The church is not a place for extortion. The church is not a place for deception. The church is not a place for entertainment. The church is a place for instruction, correction, rebukes teaching 
all scripture is given for this. 2 Timothy 3.16 If you have gotten everything you were meant to get from the church, do you know what you'll be? A good soldier of Christ. You remember I'm still talking about military. You'll be a soldier. Why are you a bloody civilian? Literally. The only thing you have going for you is the blood of Jesus. That's all. That's all. That's all. Say, no, no, I'm not the blood. Jesus, the blood, the blood. Ah, you come across them every time. Empty. They say, are you born again? Yes, yes, yes. So why are you so afraid? <laughs> when they say, learn how to fight. Spiritual jujitsu. Mm-mm. Learn spiritual combat. Mm. No, no, no. Jesus has done it all. Why are you here? Go to Jesus. Who gave you my number? Go to Jesus. Go to Jesus. You don't know his number? This is how you say it. Say J-E-S-U-S. Go. Why are you in front of me? I want to rest. Jesus had done it all. Jesus did not do anything all. Jesus began. He who began the good work where? In you. Do you hear began? Did you hear began? Do you understand English? Jesus has finished it. He said he began. You, you finished it. Pure Christian impatience. Classic impatience. Everything impatience. No, 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 no. You don't need to do it again. Are you going to redo what God has done? He did not do. He began to do. You're a holy nation. Uh -uh. You're to be a holy nation. He began the process of making you. You're a royal priesthood. Kings and priests. No, you are to be. God was speaking by faith because he speaks of things which are not as though they are. That's what that passage meant. You are a chosen generation. No, many are called, few are chosen. So, you see, you would like to interpret that. Now, I don't care what you're saying. That passage has said it. What did that passage say? That passage showed you God's desire, God's intention. God's pursuit. So we are taking instruction, and in church, you can't take instruction from just one person. Tell me how you know a diligent worker. Did you listen to the house speak. They have the Holy Spirit. Learn. So wherever you are, you go for youth service, you go to Mozambique. Learn to distinguish. This is a man of God that works hard. It's not just by their telling you. Already you've been told by observing the fruit of their labor. What's the quality of Christian they have produced? What kind of labor do you think went into producing such? Some people think it's numbers. In fact, most people think it's the size of the congregation. Can I explain that the size of the congregation that worships Cook? Coca-Cola. Can I suggest that it's large? It's a matter of cash. The easiest way to gather a crowd is throw money in the air. You use money. The fastest way to get people to gather to you is talk about money. Money is the biggest attractor of investments. You don't know? Huh? Ask MMM people. Ask Bitcoin. Anything. Anything that involves money. The fastest way to get a crowd. Promise them shiny things. A lot of it. Promise it strongly, hard, and then tell stories. They will come non-stop. They will come non-stop. Tell the stories. That prayer I prayed the other day and said God should give people surprise money. Let's insist that everybody that had money out of the blues, unexpected, testify. Give them time, five minutes each. Let them explain. Talk about it. Then watch the people that follow, the visitors that came. Watch how they will come back and invite people. That's why we will not take details of that testimony. That's why we won't. That, it was just maybe to convince one or two people that God can do anything. That, but that's why I never. Because you're going to attract a wrong crowd, a greedy crowd. You're going to show up. Huh? I heard in this place, the man prayed the next day, even as he was praying. So 
money was entering people's account just right not miracle money eh? money from people we know i saw one video and they said one man said miracle money hi people are wicked though. they zoomed in on the phone who has seen this video and even though they they tried to cover it with the hand that while while the preacher said Who has seen any video like this? Should I gist it? The preacher stands and said, Miracle money, right now. Check your phone, check your phone. And they showed a lady in the crowd and they zoomed in and showed, I think, how much? 400,000 naira had entered her phone. And this one, and that one, and this one. God, people are, people are, people are bloody. You know what they did? Yours truly, they took the picture of the woman. They zoomed into the name that transferred the 400,000 to her. He was her husband. He was there in the crowd. But her name here is her maiden name. They not brought out the picture, whether they are wedding or from their website, they put the picture here. There's the man, the woman. They are husband and wife. So the man stood right there as they're talking and transferred money to his wife's account. And they took it and showed, and we shouted in the crowd, Ooh, ee! The other one was a screensaver. <laughs> a screensaver. How do you know? Oh, because that same screen, as the person was analyzing it, he took his phone, clicked to the website that advertises the thing, the exact same amount. Something that you showed on TV. And said, look at, they just sent this guy, whether $900. Meanwhile, that's a picture that pops up on that app whenever anybody opens it. And you lied. Had the mind to lie like that. They have exposed you. You're still talking. When they expose you, you still talk. And all over the body of Christ said, listen, don't speak against men of God. Listen. To his own master, he stands or falls. What is a man of God? Nobody has agreed to answer me. I'll buy you lunch. Tell me now. I've been asking, how long? What is a man of God? Is it anything that calls itself a man of God? Are you a man of God because you call yourself a man of God? Huh? Are you a man of God? Yeah, a woman of God. It's just to find a dog and use mark and write on the side, man of God. A white dog. Maybe walking around. Or if we buy a dog, I'll call him man of God. Man of God. <laughs> what is a man of God? Fool anybody. Say, eh, 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 well, well, all over the world, the Lord has people. All of them have a duty. Stop it. Satan has a duty. We know everything has a duty. But do not say that Jesus is Satan or Satan is Jesus. Distinguish it. Because there's a kingdom and we are in a kingdom and we are fighting. Now fight, now they fight. And we use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we clash. You're going to be telling that kind of lie. They've exposed you. You won't come and say, oh, sorry, you made a mistake. I thought the money enters. you just be shouting. This thing I'm saying is old. Old news like this. I'm just shocked at how you guys don't see anything. And me, I don't even know anything. I try to avoid. I don't like knowing things. These are things I stumble across. In between there, you see people argue, say, no, don't speak against him. What makes him... So his conduct should not be observed. His conduct is to be observed. If you admire such a person, you're a crooked person. When the day of judgment comes, God will judge you thoroughly. You're a wicked sinner. 
pretending. Then you have the audacity to stand and say in Jesus' name. When you take those kinds of hands that tell lies like that and lay on people, what do you think you're doing? And you do it boldly. Unbelievers should be ashamed. Muslims should be ashamed to do what you're doing. You're doing it in Jesus' name. You call Jesus' name and told lies like that. You think you go scot-free. Because Jesus is dead, right? Jesus is not dead. So whoever you are, take note to. You can still repent. Don't say it in here. God will judge all wickedness. Don't convince yourself it won't happen. It will. Yes. Okay. Another way to know is very fast. Just say one more sentence. Time. How much of their time goes into the work? How much time goes into the work? Is it to study or to dispense? To study and to dispense. So it's not the same. Mm. But it's correct. So the amount of time they're going to study in the word of God. That's hard work. Yes. Raise your hands if you raised it. Bring the mic. Just keep it up. Once he finishes, raise your hand. He'll give it to you. How much of their resources they put? How much of their resource they put into the work of killing? That's diligent, okay? So come, come. I said you should raise your hand. If you raise your hand, they'll not come to you. When they walk tirelessly to make sure that these people that are saved still stay on the path of righteousness. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they stand. So yeah. how if they help people continue? Yes. The kind of word of God that they bring. The quality of the word of God. When someone comes back with beans, that half of it is beans, half is chaff. Wait, 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 wait. How many of you know that, ladies, I don't know about this man. How many of you know to find the best stuff you spend longer in the market? Yes. That's what she just said. But you see, me, I said it better. <laughs> market. Person that enters market, the fringes of the market. How many of you know? Tell this man. Tell this man that they are so far ahead. Men, tell the truth. Do you enter market? All the men that go deeper into the market, raise your hand. Is your mother that trained you? Put down your hand. How many of you stand by if they don't sell it outside your compound? If you even go to market, it's the fringe, the edge. Raise your hand. What are you entering inside market for now? Now, let me be honest, guys. Well done. It's us, us. Now, listen. There are many females like this here, but I don't want to spoil their chances. So let's not. Uh, no, they are here. They are here. Do you want to find out? They are here. Sisters, are they here or not? Good. So let's not, let's not spoil market for you. As they get to the market, they stand here. How much? Uh uh, give me three now. No, uh uh, you should. Okay. Keke? So what? Like from Keke? Listen to me, sisters. Proper wife material enters. You go to AFAG. You go in. Someone has to have directed. You go in. Your feet get muddy. You get there. You find your customer. What you come up with is completely different from roadside. It's exactly the same with proper study and teaching of the word. You cannot find it on the fringes. I just, no, I just saw it. It's just there in Matthew 1, verse 1. Okay, is that all you read? <coughs> and there's this other part. I saw this other. It looks like it. <laughs> no, you must enter market. I know it will take time and it's stressful. Flipping, flipping. Four hours later. Three weeks later. Then when you come out, seven years later, you speak about anything. They know you entered market. You don't speak light things. I used to sit down. Have I told you how I hear preachers? As you're talking, it's like a computer program. Truth. <laughs> It's like a, so as you're talking, this is years ago, this is not now, this is years ago. So as I'm listening to you, one, two, three, four, five, six, is that I'm in pain? And I'm not talking about opinions. It's labor. It's like manual labor. Every, you're hearing your people outside. Oh, ego! 
You are inside the room. I, I bet. You see, it's work. That's why I said, how is the guy going to go and work all day long in an office, civil service? Because you pay him 20000 a month. And also care for his family and be a good pastor or teacher. How is that meant to happen? Was he called? Well, possibly. God took, called him. So what's happening now? Why is the congregation like this? Oh, he couldn't trust the Lord to provide for him. When? Uh, that's 22 years ago. So he walked out an arrangement where he gave God some of his time. So now he's struggling on his own. He did not plant a thorough garden. He did not tend it. There's barely any fruit here. This happens to many. You look at that and you wonder, did God call this person? Why is it? Why is the work like this? Because he has not applied himself. Why? He was working for Babylon. Not in a bad way. He was working in an office to secure a pension. He couldn't trust. Couldn't trust. He knew very well God called him, but he couldn't trust God that much. His family, his parents, whom he loved so much, advised him, said, my child, listen to me. Take it from your parents. You always need something to fall back on. And instead of keeping quiet and going and saying, Father, forgive me for, for being double-minded. He said, yes, Mama, yes, Papa, I'll do what you say. In the process, you ignored what God said. So God cannot care for you. He didn't trust the Lord. Why do I say this thing? I wonder, is this a minister's conference? Yes, now. <laughs> Our whole church is a ministry. Is, everybody's a minister. If they are truly here, if they've paid any attention to anything that has been said. And so many. Last day army preachers everywhere. I don't care what you're reading. You have entered. When they summon you, you know you've been summoned. I'm just trying to get you ready even when you're ignorant. Your age, irrelevant. Except you reject it completely. Other than that, the Lord will summon you. You know what the Bible means when it says your labor of love should not be in vain. A labor of love is never to be wasted. That's what I mean when you hear old preachers that are gone and their message is still hitting around the earth. And some people are forgotten. Many people that preach flaky gospel, they don't remember them. Those who preach sound doctrine, they stay. Long after they are dead, their voice is speaking. Speak the truth, but it is hard to find the truth. It is labor. If you will pay the price, you will know truth. And it will make you free. Yes, my brother. Um, so I would say... Uh studying the word and um through discipline and the holy discipline. spirit discipline so hard work is shown through discipline and and by the power of the holy spirit by the power of the holy spirit okay uh, teaching it to the people and making it part of your life so the effort thank you the effort of teaching it to the people and practicing it that's making part of your life practicing it that's a hard working servant of god Say hard working. So I saw hands all over here. Yes. Persecution. Not as a busybody. Why do you have to go? Leave out some of these things now. Don't say everything. How do you know a man of God is a man of God? He's persecuted. Fine. Thank you. God bless you. And we want to be happy here. I saw hands there. Have someone said what you want to say? Okay. When I think when those who are being taught are able to teach others what they are practicing. So if you so you know that. The, the laborer in the midst was hard working if he passed the knowledge hard enough that they could pass it. Actually, Paul showed four generations. He said, the things which you have heard from me amongst many witnesses, teach to faithful men who in turn can teach others. That's one, two, three, four. Three, even four generations. That's how God operates. If your communications will not pass on, if you thought in a way that it only went one level deep, I am sorry, you didn't work hard enough. I'm, I'm very serious. If you thought it in a way that it drenched the next person so thoroughly that it could pass and remain to pass, 
Because as a practice, it fades. Oh, you have not read the book of Joshua. They were not even properly dead. These people were raping people like Sodom and Gomorrah. Raping men. In Benjamin. The Bible says the generation that knew Joshua and his warriors, they passed. Israel went amok. That's a function sometimes of how deep you pass. It's why I even tell our congregation here, you have to pass things on to the next generation. And I often feel very bad. Every time I have to tell them, I'll ask new people, have you heard this? They'll say no. Why have they not heard it? Now, they should go listen to a message. But I mean some of the simpler things that are day to day. Even simple things like, do you have a timetable? Things like, in the earliest days, I began to teach our people, if you're a student, we would have an all-night meeting. I've stood all night. I mean, I've not slept at all. That was very common. And we had all night till 5.36. Then I'll sit down and say, let me teach you how to draw a timetable, how to manage your life as a student in detail. Arrange it like this, like this, like this. Calculate how many hours you have outside class. That is your reading time. This is your sleep time. I did all of that at least once, twice, thrice. Thoroughly. And then I stopped because after some years I said, you should teach it to the next. And if you're truly a member of this church, you hear, they will tell you, your disciple, your shepherd, have they taught you how to have a timetable? It's a very big difference when you have broken your life into hours. You think differently. Those were things God, I didn't even know it when I was a student. God taught me later and I used to wish, I wish I knew these things. But that did not make me hold it back. I'll pass it. So it's not just that. It's those things I talked about in the first seminar. Those simple things. If you've passed across things, it makes for a wealthier, healthier, happier flock of God. When they don't know, they suffer through it. They suffer through. They may suffer all their life. Simply because someone did not tell them. Who has ever been told something and you went, oh my God, I wish I knew this thing. Why do more people not know things? As we're praying here, yeah, in, mor- in the morning, as we're worshiping and praying and doing warfare, at the time when I stopped, do you know why I stopped? Well, we, we went on for a very long time. But part of why, because part of what I got was, it's okay, stand up and go and do. Go and do. Go and do. I've heard you. How many times? You have prayed these prayers many times. Go and do what I say. Among the things I got, not that it's the first time. They go and take all this thing about warfare. You're saying, teach us to fight, teach us to fight. I've taught you tons. Go and take that content, condense it, put it in readable form. When I tell you, go and listen to messages. Some of you are trying, you're trying, you're trying. You're doing well. Some are not doing so well. Some of you are very slow. Some of you do nothing. You just say, no, I only believe in fresh food. But almost everything I preach now is a fragment of what I've preached. Anything I preached before, the first day I preached it, I can assure you I took time. Now I mention in passing in two, three, four, five minutes. And I tell you, go look for and listen. That's all I can do. Because there's too much. And there's not enough time. But specifically, if it is written out, extracted, and put in point number one, two, three, four, five. How many of you know you can collect it faster? As opposed to listening to hours and hours of messages. So that was part of what I got. So I ended a bit abruptly. I went like, amen. Because go. Go and take the content and the many strategies for spiritual warfare I've given you. Reduce it to a readable format. Booklets, books. Let people read it. When you pick up a book and say, what are some of the ways that you can overcome the enemy in this time? What are the ways, warfare. When you say it's not only prayer, what are the other things for fighting? What is the arm of God? How do you put on the arm of God? What does that even mean? All those things we've talked on extensively. But it's so extensive, it's hard to receive. One reason why I need people, and I'm speaking as though it's only our church members here, why you must commit yourself to serving in the local assembly is so you can free up other people 
to help with these things. It's not possible to put these things together easily. It's so much. You have to free up people. If you refuse to, example, you can sweep the floor. But only the same people who teach you Bible study also come and sweep the floor for you to sit on. You see, you can teach Bible study, but you can sweep the floor, can't you? So join the group that sweep the floor. Make yourself available and say, what can I do? Let them co-opt your services. Okay, every day before a meeting, come one hour ahead and clean up. Then they can stay and prepare a better sermon. Or they can help compile content that they can, you end up getting as a booklet and take and read. You can therefore sit down in three hours and finish a booklet that lays a foundation in your life for successful spiritual warfare personally. Do you understand? The ripple effects of all your choices are so powerful, you can't believe it. You wonder if you had swept the floor, not her. She would have gone to the market, not me. I would have sat down and written the book. But I went to the market because she was sweeping the floor and you were lying down on your bed at home. Did you see that ripple effect? For every liberty you provide for someone ahead of you, it should free them more to serve you. The greatest amongst you shall be your servant. But how? The apostles tried to serve bread and food. They misunderstood Jesus. Finally, reality. How many of you have read that story? Where the apostles were serving bread, serving Food. They're carrying trays around, serving like that. Then finally they said, how many of you suspect that why they did that is because Jesus said, I've been amongst you as one that serves when he washed their feet, not as one who rules over you. So they tried in the early church. They were constantly feeding all sorts of people, physical food. Do you think it was in disobedience that they stopped and said, wait, 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 wait. See, that's how you learn the ways of God most times. When you've stepped out to obey, then he tells you, that has happened to me so many times. And he's like, that's not what I meant. Or it's okay, it's okay, you have done this. But get someone else to do this. I need you to do this. They were to serve them spiritual bread. They said, we can't spend our time serving tables. We must give ourselves to the study of the word of God and prayer. The ministry is the service, the word ministry there is service the service of the word that's what they were to serve the word bible bread but they thought they were to serve physical rice and bread if you don't free up and take up responsibilities you will not do this effectively i hope all the heads of department know after this give me the next question sorry there was one more hand the heads of department, after this meeting, we are meeting, and the 24, and the, the rest that we're supposed to meet, we'll be meeting with me. Let's have a little plan. It's, you do know God heard our prayers this morning. Uh -huh. The worst thing you can do is what Christians like doing. After that, you say, thank you, Jesus. It was a lovely time, especially the morning side. Before evening came, we loved it. What does that even mean? That's empty talk. That's love that has no purpose. Like that brother said, or the other, or he talked about love. Love is not talk. I love you, I love you, I love you. Will you marry me? Okay. You know I love you. Okay. You're waiting for him to prove it. I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm hungry, oh. How many of you agree you do love? Love is done. Please, love me so much that you stand up. It's morning. Go and get work. So you can bring back the back bacon. Do you understand? The proof that you love me is not waking up in the morning, looking at you on the bed and saying, I love you. <laughs> I just love you so much. That's why I'm very astonished at many females. Oh, I love you, I love you. So it's, it is tongue. He's, what he's saying doesn't mean anything. The other one may not be able to say, I love you, but very hard working, coming and going, applying himself. Say, I don't have my husband. He's not even romantic. You have demons. 
<laughs> Each romantic, if it's me, I'll go and print a banner, romance, and give you a small salt. It's not romantic. He's killing himself to provide for you and protect you and care for you and your babies. It's, it's not romantic. You like flowers. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. May we have true understanding.